And so I spent uh, part of my young uh, adulthood uh, going to school there. I attended a boarding school. It was mixed. So we had both boys and girls. And um, I was in the seventh grade when I moved here to the U.S. Uh, so initially, my parents were actually here. Um, so they brought me and my older sister uh, to live with them. Um, and so I started... I came in April, actually, and so schools were sort of like getting uh, ready to be done for the semester. And so I had to um, sort of either start school or wait till August and start uh, in the fall semester. So um, I had to sort of uh, take an assessment and find out um, what grade they were going to put me in. So. Uh, luckily, or I guess based on the Kenyan system of education, I was overqualified for seventh grade. So I got to start uh, in eighth grade and that was in the fall. Uh, but during the summer, so from April all the way to uh, July, I just sort of spent time at home playing video games and just, you know, trying to learn a little bit about the culture here. I didn't have any friends at the time. Um, my English was not uh, some people couldn't really understand me or they said I had an accent, so it was hard to go outside and socialize or make friends. Uh, so I just usually spent time at home um, watching my younger sister. Um, and so I didn't really start making friends until I started school um, in August. Um, and the first few months were really tough. Um, I didn't know anyone every, every time I met someone they just kept asking me oh so do actually animals live in your backyard you know like in in Kenya and all those uh, uh, I guess notions people have about someone coming from Africa seeing wildlife and all that kind of thing so it wasn't really a good start for me and so um, slowly like I started making friends uh, some of them lived around my neighborhood and so that's how we sort of uh, became friends and from there I just kind of tried to um, connect with people who I felt like had similar culture like me or things that we could talk about and it would made it made it easier uh, to make friends that way so I tended to make friends uh, with people who were from different countries uh, my first friend was actually Korean and uh, from that I sort of got myself interested in the Korean culture and then uh, just um, <laughs> um, but um, so um, from high school uh, middle school I transitioned to high school uh, in high school I had already made a couple friends and that was when I started sort of figuring out what I wanted to do um, and I knew that I wanted to be in the medical field or in the healthcare field. So I joined a club that focused on health occupations and uh, it was called Health Occupation Students of America. And so we would just sort of uh, get together and just discuss anything in the medical field or our interests in medicine and all that kind of stuff. And I participated in different activities, uh, competitions and things of that nature. Um, and I, from there, I also started volunteering um, within the local um, church. Um, and then uh, from there, I eventually decided what I wanted to do for my uh, undergraduate. And so I studied uh, biochemistry because I wanted to go to a medical school. Um, and I had to sort of start looking for schools, uh, but my parents didn't really know a lot about uh, like what best colleges to get into, um, how to use um, your, I guess, grades to get scholarships and things like that. So I had to work with different people within the high school and figure out like the best uh, option for me, being like I just recently moved and I didn't really have um, like a lot of uh, connections or things like that. And so I was able to get um, good counselors to advise me on how to um, be competitive with the applications and uh, making sure that I secure like scholarships and things like that. Uh, so I managed to uh, get accepted to a school which was about seven hours away from Austin but it was still in Texas. Uh, so I had to plan a whole move again and be separated uh, from my parents uh, and my family and the new friends I'd already made. 
um, and I had to start afresh and make new friends. Um, and so I sort of used the same tactic I, I did uh, in middle school. So kind of like aligning myself or making friends with people from different countries or cultures because I felt like I related more to them than I did like with people who were uh, from here or hadn't really explored um, outside of the U.S. And so they weren't really um, that, I guess, knowledgeable about different um, struggles people face from different places. Um, and so um, I guess uh, fast forward to uh, my move to St. Louis. Um, I knew that I wanted to be in research, um, particularly work with like uh, refugees or immigrants or people who were just like always having to uh, find their place somewhere. Um, and so uh, Wash U seemed like a good place. Uh, they did pretty good uh, research and St. Louis is known for like its international uh, diversity with people from all over uh, different places. And so um, I decided to uh, come over here and uh, I've been here two years so far and I like it. <laughs> And I'm looking forward to meeting more people uh, or interacting with more people. So, yeah, that's it. Great, great. What a journey. <laughs> what a journey. Uh, I, and I, I was just telling Lucy, I, I think that's moving should be enough now. We should be done with moving now. And St. Louis is home. <laughs> we, 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 we want to keep you here. So yeah. that we can save you the hassle of uh, traveling and moving again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's good. So um, I don't know, Alan is, is in there. So um, we, we, maybe I'll let Alan, uh, if you're ready, you can go ahead and uh, into, uh, maybe uh, read the bio for uh, the next speaker. And then after that, we will come back uh, for some few questions and a discussion now for everybody else. Uh, I think you are mute. Let me see if I can unmute you. Unmute yourself. Is it better now? You're good. Yep, you're good now. Yeah, I do apologize. I joined the meeting. I uh, was having a little bit issue. Um, the next speaker is Cyril Lom, serve as uh, the exec executive director of Caring Ministry, which serve low income family, immigrants, and refugee in becoming self sufficient and funding sustainable housing in St. Louis. He also teach at St. Louis University as an adjunct professor. Lom immigrated to the United States at the age of seven, he has earned a degree in political science and communication from the University of Missouri, St. Louis. He also holds a master's degree in legal studies. In his free time, he served the most recent refugee immigrant in connecting them with the necessary resources to become a vital aspect of St. Louis. At the same time, he enjoys working alongside young immigrant men in developing their skill to become successful in today's society. Welcome, Cyril. Thank you, Mr. Allen. I uh, really appreciate it uh, for having me here. Lucy, uh, that was an amazing, amazing story. Uh, I, I, it's an honor to meet you virtually, and I can't wait to meet you in person because we need more leaders uh, as that, it's more young people like that. Mr. Jeffrey, uh, thank you for having such a serious uh, what better than to show the hope that Africa can bring to St. Louis and bring a different narrative. And it's such a pleasure to be here. And honestly, when you started telling me about uh, share your story, I started thinking, what, what is my story? And thank you guys for that introduction. Uh, uh, yeah, but when I started thinking about what is my story, I said, honestly, I'm a young professional that's allowing his dreams to unfold right before his eyes. That is what I am. I, I'm a young professional, like many people, that has a great aspiration to be something great. Uh, where I'm at, it's not where I wanna end. Uh, I love what I do. It's a start to what I do, uh, but I know that I have a long way to go 
to achieve what I aspire to achieve. And I'm here believing that it would happen, uh, but I enjoy where I'm at at the second. Uh, so as I share kind of my, my little story and kind of answer some questions is uh, the one thing I want to kind of let everyone Sorry about that. Can you guys hear me still? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of the qu things I want people to really uh, get from this is a leader is able to acknowledge the pain of loss. And while you acknowledge it, while building bridges for a new thing that's about to happen, a leader has to be able to pivot. Uh, you got to be realizing that pivoting is important. Uh, yes, I teach at the, at the school of Chaffetz in SLU as an adjunct prof in the School of Chaffetz, the School of Business, and I teach social entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. And one of my beacons that I teach the students is pivot. Uh, be ready to pivot at all times. Uh, so I am born in Gambia, West Africa. I left that part. I don't know why I left that part uh, away, but I am born in Gambia, West Africa. Yes, I, as I said, I came at the age of seven. Um, I turned seven, I believe. I turned seven here. I came in March, between March 18 and April 5th. Uh, just before my birthday is when I arrived. Uh, my parents are hardworking individuals. Um, there's three siblings, three siblings, uh, and our parents worked hard. We were in the war. We were in the war when it started uh, in Sierra Leone. And when the war started, uh, the first thing that we did was uh, my parents sent us to our grandparents. And when they sent us to our grandparents, they came over to the United States. And we were separate from our parents for maybe two, three years away from our parents. And these, this is tough for kids uh, to be separated from their parents. But this was a struggle. They went ahead, they paved the way, and I ended up moving to Fort Wayne, Indiana and um, with my two older brothers. And then our, our little brother uh, was born later on. But when we moved to Indiana, we were dirt poor. Uh, we were really dirt poor. Um, back in those times, uh, especially in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, refugees and immigrants have way more clout now uh, with organizations uh, helping out. Uh, they have so much clout now, but back in those days, um, immigrants and refugees weren't really helped. Uh, you had to make your way. So for three, three or four years, we bought nothing at a grocery store or at a clothing store. Nothing. Uh, we shopped at food banks and we shopped at clothing banks. Um, a church came alongside us that we're forever grateful. Uh, we were able to get great education, but my parents worked hard. And uh, all of us brothers are a testament of what they worked hard to do. Uh, and of course, I moved out here uh, to UMSL my sophomore year of college. Um, I, I pursued my degree in poli-sci, pre-law major, uh, graduated with that. I worked alongside Congressman Clay uh, as an intern for um, for about a year because I was unsure of law school. I was ready to take the LSAT, but I was also worried, what does that mean for me? Uh, and I returned back to UMSL to complete uh, my comm degree in communications. And uh, I left UMSL, as I talked about, and I graduated, went on to get my master's in legal studies and also become a certified paralegal. And then my time at, after finishing UMSL in 2010, I started as an outreach coordinator, you could say, at Caring Ministries. and. Uh, so I record, I sat there, I worked, I learned. And uh, while I was finished up my master's, after I finished up my master's, the board decided to give me the title of executive director. And uh, that was an honor to receive that title of an executive director. But my ver version of an executive director is not always what people see. My version of ex executive director was a boots on the ground. You go down, you dig deep down into where people are actually struggling and you move them up with you. And as you move them up with you, you also sit in the top with meetings and be able to speak on their behalf and make a difference. Uh, so that's what I was in leading caring ministries was a, a very unique honor. Uh, I took over from a lady that was upset. Uh, she did get fired. Now she's my board member and a great friend, uh, but she got fired by the board for differences and she took everything. And so I had zero to learn from. Uh, in my first year, I was able to get about 40 more clients. We had about 20 or so in Justin Peterson, we were able to complete about, I think about 10 homes in my first year. Um, many other things I, I developed, but this was giving me a chance to lead in creating partnerships and working with financial coaches and getting the clients the best financial capability to actually be strong, not just in home ownership, but we all know that the laws were written for the people with the land, 
So how can we get you financially stable to actually make a difference in our society? Because we are here. We're here in this great nation that allows us to become whatever we want to be. Uh, so let's take the opportunity. So I, I do a lot of networking, a lot of sitting down with individuals that make a difference in that world. Uh, and in regards of housing, uh, the model is re really unique. Uh, as I was sitting down and thinking, what's a model and approach that could really help immigrants, refugees, and we also brought in it to low income families really become stable with home ownership. Well, one of the things to realize is the comps in the neighborhood are disparities. So how can we make the comps as fair and help the market value still increase, but actually also allow the families to get what they want to get. And uh, so in saying that, we were able to customize people's home. Uh, so I was able to give people whatever they want. In regards, I say whatever you want, but there's a budget to whatever you want. So yes, you do, but uh, there's a little budget to that. So those families are able to get their budget, but also one of the big plight that happens is that, well, the down payment, the closing costs, uh, when I first started, I, as you said, I, I was a young kid out of the grassroots. I was providing the full down payment assistance, the full 10%. Uh, I was providing it. Uh, well, I had to get smart, right? I was learning. I was pivoting. I, I realized my loss. I had to pivot and figure out what's the best approach to grow a company and yet still make an impact. Uh, so we scaled that down to uh, providing the closing costs because we wanted families to have a skin in the game, as Jeffrey alluded to, that immigrants, Africans just don't want to be known as just receiving a handout, but we can make a difference. So we said, well, let's put the difference to the test. And making that difference to the test, we said, we provide the closing costs for you about three, five percent for you, and then you'll come in and cover the rest. And that was able to do. And as caring ministers grew, I got a chance to sit in these stories. I try to meet every single client one on one. Uh, because I want them to know my story. Because when you know my story and I know your story, mm -hmm. we become friends. Right. We become tighter than ever. So I always sit down to every client. And uh, as I sat down, my heart began to yearn for these families. Because I realized, I said housing will solve, will sustain them. But I realized, man, they need more than housing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just started driving me nuts. How can I do it? What does that mean? Does that mean I become a caring minister, becomes a CDC? Community Development Corporation. What does that look like? All these thoughts are going through my mind because I want to make a difference and I want to make sure the vicious cycle of poverty, the vicious cycle that we face when we come into the United States gets eliminated or gets uh, scaled off a little bit, the tension that we go through. Uh, so uh, right now I am looking at that model and saying, what does that look like? So I'm not there yet. I'm looking at the model. But in that, I was able to lead caring ministries um, in my fourth year, we, our budget was about a million dollar budget that we were bringing in. Uh, we were able to secure loans. Uh, as a startup, everybody knows how hard it is as a startup. I had very sleepless, sleepless nights. Uh, uh, securing funding, it's almost impossible. You can have the best model, and we had a great model. Uh, banks were approving our own clients. So I was, I was using banks' own money, and yet banks still would not give me secure a capital. So at the end of the day, it was tough. Uh, at the end of the day, I had uh, my, my church that went out on the limp and said, we, we believe in what you do and we'll be a co-signer mm -hmm. and, and establish what we did. Prior, we worked with an investor, but our investor, we did a lot of homes. I mean, we were maybe ranking in about 20 plus homes. The investor had a lot more collateral uh, capital than us. So we were able to do a lot, but our cut on our end was a very much minute so we weren't growing to the speed that we should have grown. The investor was taking most of the profit, so we had to separate ourselves. But towards it, we were able to deal with angel investors. I'm talking about Hall of Fame football players that invested in our capital. It was so easy that it was a text message to get capital. Uh, that's where it came to. Uh, but it took a lot of hard work and perseverance. It took a lot of clout and belief in oneself. Like I said, I am just a young professional seeing my dream unfold right before my eyes and I'm enjoying it every second and I'm living in the moment and that's why I like it living in. Uh, through that, uh, Slew's Dean and I got a chat and he realized that this is a unique model I haven't seen and he said, you know what, uh, I have an opening. Do you want to teach for me entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship? I've been teaching there for about three and a half years. I said, sure. I, I don't have my MBA. Uh, he said, but you lived it. Those are exactly, you're the true definition of entrepreneurship. I said, okay. Uh, so I've been teaching that juniors and seniors who've had some of the most successful on Washington Avenue, some coffee shops of my former students. 
have done it. They're doing perhaps maybe bigger things than I am. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very happy because that's how it should be, mm -hmm. right? I, my goal right now, uh, and you'll see later on, I, uh, when uh, Jeffrey asked the question, what are some of our, our biggest mistakes or our thing we would have done differently? And uh, I think that perception, I would have definitely changed the narrative. Of, of, my, of my perception. Uh, perhaps I came here as a young kid, just like you, Lucy, and it's easy uh, for us to get mingled in between. And my, my belief, my narration was I would get to the top and I would pull the person. And that meant that I didn't, I didn't build us the stronger relation, strongest relationship with the African associations and organizations uh, as I was getting to that top. Uh, but COVID has been a blessing. Uh, failures have been a blessing. Uh, because when you fail, you always learn how to pivot. And in that failures, you got to see what the true definition. So um, something I would I would do and right now that I do is I pull up, as you said in that last sentence, I pull up the young person right next to me. As I'm going, I'm pulling them with me. When I go to meetings, once it's not a quiet space of a board meeting, I'm pulling them with me. I'm introducing them with me. I'm giving them projects. I have projects and I come up with the idea, the vision. I say, you lead it. And I just, I'm just in the background. I don't have to be the forefront. I have confidence in what I bring to the table. I, I believe that uh, the city of St. Louis knows the confidence that I bring to the table uh, through caring ministries. I was able to, the mayor recognized um, caring ministries is a health issue. I didn't realize housing was a health issue, Lucy. Uh, I didn't realize how big it was a house issue, but a uh, health issue. The mayor was able to appoint me to the board of health and hospitals for the city of St. Louis. Uh, we've made big impact, big impact. I've been able to work with Dr. Eccles to really open his eyes and see how he wants to work more with immigrants. So I got to be there. I, I got to sit in the West End Development Board uh, that gets to be an adopted plan for the city of St. Louis, right? Um, there's a refugee immigrant population in there. And they, they ask us, what does the immigrants refugees want to do in this neighborhood? And I got to be a voice for that. I mean, how, how better does it get to be? I got to sit on a lot of other board, um, Lutheran Foundation board, we were able to give 2.5 million a year to various nonprofits throughout St. Louis. All this, I just got to play my piece. When I sit in those boards, I understand what my role is. Uh, my role is as an expert in housing, yes. My role is an expert in community development, yes. But I think my biggest role is fighting for those people that are seen as less. My biggest role is fighting for the immigrants. My biggest role is fighting for Africans and making them seen as a people with a vision that can make a difference in this community. Uh, so those are the things, you know, when I think about differently, the chance to do things differently that I would, and it's been truly um, an enjoyment. I think Mr. Jeffrey, I'm just pulling out my other question you asked was, um, what are your biggest challenges as an immigrant? Well, it was being, taken as I am. Um, so as, as, an, as an immigrant, I always, when you come this at the age of seven, uh, that age, you don't really line up quite with everybody, right? Uh, I think maybe Lucy, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, uh, for me, I, I grew up in an all white neighborhood. I went to private school my whole life. Um, yet I'm an immigrant, yet I suffered, uh, didn't have things. But I want people, I was never taken as, you know what, we, you are as us. I was always taken as you're an, you're an immigrant, you're a refugee, you are here. You're maybe not quite to our level yet, you know? Maybe you can't handle the stuff we handle. Uh, you do great work, but you just can't handle the stuff we handle. But that was my biggest challenge, to be seen as an equal. Uh, and that's a fight, as we know what's going on currently. It's a fight that we're always going to be in. Uh, to be seen as an equal. But if we're together, we stand together, I think that fight is more uh, easy to, to win that fight. And one of the favorite thing of being an immigrant here in America uh, is that people say it's the land of opportunity. It is truly, truly the land of opportunity. Um, again, I go back to my story. Two parents, um, war has ha happened in Sierra Leone. They have left. They have two, two, uh, three young kids. They have a fourth kid. They're shopping in food banks and clothing banks. They have nothing. And now uh, the, that oldest son uh, does laser surgery out in California. Uh, 
that other son uh, works in corporate office in health world. And that other son is an executive director for nonprofit and teaching at St. Louis University. And the baby brother uh, is making his dream happen in California, uh, being and following in his footsteps. And I hope he becomes a better attorney that I never become, but maybe I would become someday as he pursues to become the great attorney uh, that I dreamed of becoming. So that's my story. And I'm truly encouraged to see this platform as it grows. Thank you. Wow. Wow. What a great story. That is uh, awesome. Awesome. I can just sit down here and listen and listen and listen, and I'm not going to get tired. <laughs> but I, have, I, 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 feel, I can feel the energy. I, I, I can feel the energy in the air when How are you're you? talking. Good. How are you doing? Good. Oh my God, yeah. So um, uh, that that was that was great. I, I and I hear that uh, a lot of stories that you're talking about uh, from the experiences from your past. And I think the story what you just shared is what I've always wanted to see if we can be able to listen to. That uh, the immigrants when they come here, they just need a little bit of guidance. They just give need that little support at the beginning. And after that, you just, as a city, as a region, you just reap all the, you, you, you have a lot to gain from them. There is a lot of benefits that comes with that. But they only need that little support when they come in, they land in. And that's what we want everybody to know about. But also listening, like you say, people just see immigrants of like you, especially if you're not very much exposed to the people who are you're meeting, if they're not very much exposed, you always think about what they have heard about in the news, and especially when some of the uh, politics get it out of hand and talk about calling us all kinds of names, and people go with that. But uh, I, I've always thought uh, the, the better way to change that narrative is actually when we share, we share our stories. And, and be the person, like now I've, I've, I'm really, I'm, I've really been following uh, Cyril. I think we met like four or five years ago, I mean seven years ago, more than seven. But I've seen transition, I've seen now you change and I see now you being in the board of housing board in St. Louis, that's huge. Anybody you meet there, they know you're an immigrant and they will go with that, they go with that image. I know I met an immigrant who is, from Africa. They may not even know the name of the country. And then the reason why I, 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 I came up, we came up with this idea of the Building Momentum Speaker Series is that I've always believed this, the impact you make with the person that you meet, they stick with that. Uh, you all guys know about the uh, St. Louis, the arch, the way you go to the arch, you go to the arch, you're only five people in the room, right? So I was there. We were. I was there with my two girls, and then the the next person who came with us was uh, uh, a man and his son. So when you get there, you have to talk unless you have a problem. You have to talk <laughs> unless. I mean, it's always an opportunity to talk because you're five. You're just right there. How are you going to be there for that five minutes and not talking? So we're talking, and the guy said, "You have an accent." Uh, and now this is another point. When somebody tells you you have an accent, there are two ways to respond. You get angry or you see an opportunity to educate somebody. So to me, I always say it's an opportunity to have a conversation. Oh yeah, I say, yeah, I have an accent. And I, I say, where are you from? I say, I'm from Kenya. And I, I always end up, and I'm proud to be a Kenyan. So if you had anything negative about it, then I, I kind of stop you from coming about it. So it kind of hit your head. And you say, oh, you're from Kenya. The guy just light up and up. He just lighten up and say, oh, I love Kenyans. I, I love Kenyans and I want to go there at the one time. And he said, tell me, I told him, tell me about Kenyans. He said, yeah, I'm from Kansas. I'm just in St. Louis visiting with my son. I wanted him to see the arch. But I'm from, from Kansas. I, had, I own an auto shop. So there is one couple who is a Kenyan, they always come to my place. And they all talk to, teach me some Swahili because when I told him I'm from Kenya, he just extended his hand and he said, Jumbo. 
And I was so excited that this guy could say it's a jumbo. We just connected just because of that. And uh, so after we had a conversation, he said, this guy he comes to my place. He bring me chapati. He talks to me about some Swahili and, 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 and ask him, how many other Kenyans you know? He said, I only know that guy. <laughs> I only know that guy. But he said, I love Kenyans because of one guy. And he believes that, and because we met and we also had a good conversation, I confirmed to him that all Kenyans are good because we had a good time at the going up. And even when we came back, we came back the same cabin and, and we had exchange some numbers. So I proved to him all Kenyans are good. So uh, the point I've always said that anytime you, have a, you meet with people, Anytime you interact with somebody from whatever it is, it's an opportunity to prove to them. Either you confirm to them what they already know, or you change to what they don't know. And so sometimes we either change to the good or to the worst. So I've always challenged people to do the good part of it. And that is what uh, 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 Ciro is doing and Lucy is uh, be doing whatever he has because I met with Suri, we only met with Lucy for like, I think it was like five minutes. And after that, I just wanted to connect with her. We were always calling her and I've all, when I was thinking about this, I've always, oh, the person that I need to invite is Lucy. I didn't know a lot of it, but the few minutes we met, I knew she has something that we can be able to, she can be able to share with others. So uh, when I hear uh, Ciro sharing about that, uh, your experience uh, with the St. Louis city, I've, uh, now at the St. Louis University, I've always wished that we have more of you in this city because now the people who have very negative about the Africans immigrants, the narrative will change. And, and, and if we can always be able to do, I see a lot of people in this forum and I see uh, Luce, uh, Dr. Mudoni uh, at, at uh, Webster University, you're great making a big impact over there, just being there and uh, representing the immigrants. And uh, every time we invite you, you have always there to share with us. I, I say, uh, Rinola, you've done a great job, actually. I, I've seen you in the St. Louis airport, all over everywhere. Every time you go there, you leave an impact. You leave a name, an image about who African immig immigrants are. I see Peter Karaya with where you're working with Mercy Hospitals. Uh, a lot of great things that you hear. And I see um, uh, Sabina with uh, UHOI for your work that you're doing with the uh, uh, accounting and taxes and every time we invite you to share. It's all things. One thing I'll say, I, I see Rebecca Miller is in the audience. Thank you, thank you Rebecca for joining us today. Uh, and everybody else that I see on the forum. So uh, I, I think I'll go back to uh, Lucy, probably, and then I will open up for the, for the people to share. We, we want to make sure that we keep our time. Uh, there's some questions that I wanted you to ask. And one of the things is that what has been your biggest challenge as an immigrant? Um, Sarah sort of touched upon it a little bit, but um, either fitting in and finding friends and sort of standing up for myself. Because um, constantly as an immigrant, it, your voice is not always heard and you always have to educate people or prove that you're not this or that. So um, constantly educating people, having them know like, oh, not everyone is like this or the picture you have about immigrants is not that. That's just like what the media, the media or people who don't want to welcome them like see them as, but we're more than just that. And so like avoiding that single side story of like what people paint you to be versus like what you actually are um, has been, it's still a challenge because uh, mm -hmm. still constantly I still have to prove myself or prove my worth. And that's not, yeah, not a good thing <laughs> to constantly have to prove yourself. So not being equal like you mentioned earlier so good yeah that that's i agree that's a that's always a big challenge to uh, all of us actually even as i've been here for almost 16 years 16 years i still struggle to make them uh, know who i am and also feed in so that they can i can also not uh offend some people i i, I have all friends from all kinds of 
corners, but uh, you're gonna have, I try to balance and calculate my words so that I can, I don't, I don't confuse them. Um, so Alan, you have the next question you wanna ask? Absolutely. Um, the next question is, what is your favorite things about being an immigrant, about being here in America? That for Lucy. Oh, okay. Um, I guess um, being uh, multicultural, uh, so I don't just fit in one place. Um, I have different stories and different characters or different people in my life uh, that sort of make it um, exciting or interesting. And um, I've sort of, uh, through my identity as an immigrant, I have experienced different cultures and I'm able to relate to people who either are from the same country or different countries, but still sort of share um, parts of the culture that are similar. So having that diversity as an immigrant, I think I enjoy that because uh, America is so multicultural and I don't even think there's an actual single culture in America. So just having that um, ability to uh, fit in uh, or relate to other people, um, I like that. Great. That's great, that's great. And uh, Siri already talked about um, I think you've already answered what is one thing you wish to do differently. Uh, you mentioned something like changing the narrative, if, uh, if not mistaken. Uh, can you talk a little bit more, uh, how would you like to change that narrative? Uh, in what area uh, would you uh, do it uh, more specifically? So yes, uh, in regards to expounding, on changing the narrative. I think many times when people see me, uh, maybe they, they know I look African. Uh, they might say I don't sound fully African. Uh, you, you have a good job, you have good things. So maybe you're not African. Um, and then that, the narrative I'm trying to change also is that for me, um, I definitely was working hard towards making it. Right. Um, I think we, we all get here and our, and our goals, our desires is to make it. And uh, my percept, my, the way I think uh, many Africans, immigrants perceive me uh, was as an individual that maybe doesn't connect as much to his roots. Uh, uh, but I, I do connect very much to my roots. Um, I, as Jeffrey said, he's a proud uh, Kenyan. I'm a proud, proud Gambian. Uh, my oh my, if I could tell you about that greatest country ever, I wouldn't stop bragging about the Gambia. Uh, I love it. But uh, because of my aspiration, because of my hindsight, uh, the narrative that was created, perhaps I think was that I'm just silo, I'm moving on and I might not care as much as the immigrant community. And the way I feel is changing it is what I'm already doing, but now in building more stronger uh, relationships with the immigrant organizations. Yes, I always had a relationship. Yes, I'm always in it, but I didn't, I didn't perhaps lend as much as my, my, my gifts. Uh, I, I like to deal one-on-one. -on -one. I'm actually a very introvert pe person. People don't believe that, uh, <laughs> that I'm actually an extrovert, but people think I'm an extrovert, but I'm actually an introvert. Uh, I like walking along with young people, with others that perhaps aren't gifted in the entrepreneurial. So my mind is very entrepreneurial. And I, I wrote an article with Community Builders Network a couple of years ago about how immigrants could help revive communities. So in regards of that, I believe that I look at the individuals and their assets, what they bring to the table and actually help them meet that goal. Uh, so the narrative I, wanna, I, I would love to change is that I am moving up the ladder, but I'm pulling as much immigrants as possible, but I'm also helping and giving back to the immigrant organizations uh, such as Vintendo for Africa and others that are doing amazing work and I could help more than I have helped in the past. That's great. And I think I'm gonna go back to Geoffrey. Uh, you mentioned we can have like open question. Um, everyone who 
feel comfortable to ask. Um, if they can't ask, uh, ask that, they can also post it in the chat. But before we go to that point, uh, let's just give Geoffrey also if he has something to add. Geoffrey? Uh, no, I think that's good. Uh, we, we, we can go ahead and uh, open up. And if you want to ask a question, uh, you can unmute yourself and go ahead and uh, um, talk. Uh, we give you that time to ask a question. Uh, but I think uh, as we get people, uh, Mupenda, you have a, you have a question? Go ahead. You are on mute. Let's see if we uh, think you have a big mask. Go ahead. Huh? <laughs> now, you? you're, now you're free. <laughs> no, no. I'm fine, right? You're good now. All right. Yeah, my name is uh, Mohamed uh, Mupenda. Yeah, I'm from Africa. I think I'm just uh, Africa. Basically, uh, DRC. Huh? Which country? Uh, from DRC, Republic okay. Democratic of Congo. But I have spent uh, many years, or I have grown up in Uganda, Kenya, and Rwanda. I have also uh, spent uh, three years, this is my second year in the US. Uh, my question goes to Siri and uh, Luz. I can see you have uh, made it. It's like that's part of the dream I had when I was in Africa. I had a different uh, perception about the US. I thought when I get to the US, things will move softly for me. It's like I will always aim higher than I was back in Africa, of which it wasn't easy for me. And even now, it's not easy. I'm still trying, I climb, I go down. I try to seek assistance from uh, Geoffrey. They guide me, but still, I say I have a long way to go. Uh, the question is, uh, based on what I have seen, what you have seen, whatever we are seeing, all of us, uh, what can we do uh, to have a voice? It's like when it comes to uh, professional jobs, uh, mostly people who come from Africa, if we are to apply with Americans who speak the American uh, English and they are educated like we are educated, they don't uh, start taking us like, no, you need to study in the US, of which me I see the education should be kind of universal. If you are educated, you are educated, mm -hmm. but it's not what I have been seeing. Like you who have already uh, made a step like uh, Cyril of where you are, uh, Lucky or Lucy, uh, what do you think we can do? Hmm? Or what do you think you can do uh, to push people like us who just come and we find ourselves stuck, we don't have someone to push us, we don't have someone uh, to make these people understand that we also have our skills and knowledge we can offer to them. I guess I'll take a shot at it first. Um, thank you for your question. And to say I've not made it yet, uh, I'm still on the journey <laughs> because I'm truly not there yet. Uh, but my encouragement is for each and every single one of us first to look at ourselves, uh, take an honest look at ourselves and realize what are the assets, what is the gifting that we have. And when you look at that, be confident in it. Uh, I tell my students, you don't have to be the smartest person out there. You don't have to have the most money. But the way, yes, you have to have those things. Those things are important. But the demeanor, the way you carry yourself, and the way you speak with confidence makes the world of a difference. Uh, but I think, yes, when, when we uh, apply, I think we're not given the chance. But I think it's individuals as you meeting with various individuals. I think in a platform as such and talking. Uh, because yes, you might be looking for a job, an opportunity. Well, I might know someone in that field. I might know someone in that field. The way uh, 
It's many things happen, and, and it's, it's a God thing. That's what I said. The many things I do, it's a God thing. Uh, there was just a line in. Know people and things like that and set it up in the right way. But I think you have to start carrying yourself and being out there in every network event and putting yourself out there. And when you put yourself out there, it's not a, a push in your face, but it's a gentle reminder of what you bring to your table. Uh, I've decided that I'm not going to do everything. There's numerous things I can do. I'm gifted in many things, right? But the one thing I'm gifted, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hone on those skills and be the best at it as possible. And I'm going to meet somebody and network and share these kind of things. So I don't know, but I would love your contact. If I could help, I would love to be able to help and push any way I can uh, and help you get the dream that you want to get. Because I believe it says, I know when I was in college, it says you can, in every five person, you can get to whomever you want in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. Should be shorter now. Uh, so together is better. The problem is we haven't been together. Uh, we've been divided. Together we stand, together is strong. So I think it's just talking and being upfront with people. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'll echo some of what you said. So networking for sure. Um, and obviously being here right now, this is a good start. You're, network you're networking with people, talking about your interests or your struggles, and someone who knows someone might connect you to another person. Um, what I wish I had done earlier, like during my time, uh, is like doing informational interviews. And so that's kind of like you reach out to people who you see whatever they're doing and you're interested in, and you just reach out to them be like, okay, I see you're doing this. I'm interested in this. Could you tell me a little bit more about how you got to where you are? And then just kind of like taking those, not exactly the same routes, but knowing what to avoid and what to look forward to. Um, and also like the strengths and weaknesses, knowing what you're capable of, knowing your skills and being able to sell those skills to other people. Uh, Cause like Cyril said, you don't necessarily have to be knowledgeable, but your attitude and how you um, approach things that can be, um, something that someone is looking forward, uh, like looking for. Um, so being um, someone who's very driven, um, not giving up, uh, taking every single failure as an opportunity to improve um, and just doing the best that you can. Um, and then the other one I had is like making allies or community. Uh, so if you know someone who works somewhere else, uh, just kind of like uh, reaching out to them and um, having them sort of back you up, knowing who you are, selling uh, your skills to someone else, or uh, just highlighting what your abilities are. Um, and then obviously making community uh, right now in this kind of time, um, staying true to your roots or staying true to your community, that's who is going to help you out like from hardships and, you know, be there for you um, when things don't work out. So that's... Um, all I got. <laughs> Can I add one more thing? I, Lucy tapped into it in regards of mentorship. I have uh, numerous mentors. Uh, during COVID, I reached out back to Congressman Clay. Um, I reached out to him. I, when I was starting, I told him I wanted to make a difference. And he kind of said, do nonprofit, go out in a bus station, write things and hand it out. That's what he told me to do. And I went out. I said, I'm, I'm just, I just honestly don't feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> and he, he made me do a couple of exercises, send it to him. And I have other mentors in various fields. I'm always sitting down with my mentors. I'm trying to learn from them. I'm a student too. Uh, a student can only learn and learn as much as you can. So I have mentors and those mentors, uh, anybody in any field, I think if you go to them and say, hey, I want to learn from you. I don't think anybody pushes you away. I, I think they want to take you. You might not get a job, but they want to take you in. And I think through that building of relationship, eventually they'll know somebody or connect or eventually you'll you'll take off what you've learned from them and make it your own and which is a very good selling uh point to the community so that was a good point lucy that's Thank powerful you. good that is good i love i like that uh feedback i, I am also learning i'm really learning from 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 lucy and from cyril and thanks uh mohammed for that question anybody else with another question I have one. So you mentioned uh, during your, um, by the way, thank you guys, uh, Lucy and uh, Cyril. You make me feel so proud being an African. <laughs> and my name is Arinola Solanki. I've been in St. Louis now for about 16 years. I own a party rental business and uh, proud to say we are certified by the city of St. Louis. So 
Uh, my question is, you spoke about how leaders should acknowledge the pain of the past in order to pivot. Now, are you talking about our pain as immigrants, our struggles coming into this country and what we face? Or are you talking about the pain of the Black American brothers and sisters that we met here? And that knowing that to engage with them. So when I talk about pain, and those are, those are pains. Uh, when I was talking about pain, I was talking about uh, the things we learn as we grow uh, in regards of business, in regards of life. Uh, so yeah, those are pains, um, but we have to be able to receive some of those pains. So yes, as, as an immigrant, I understand the pains I went through and I use that pains to go back in a community I've been working for a lot in Hodemont community. Um, in a month and a half, I was able to provide uh, through the grace of God, $18,000 worth of food in that community. Uh, we're hoping to bring a soccer club in that, so many things, right? But why was I, I endured that pain that I went through in housing. Um, there was a tough loss, tough loss in housing. Thank God for bailout. Thank God for business. You know business, ma'am. And you know, in businesses, you have ups, you have downs, uh, but you keep moving, you keep moving. And so, yes, uh, that pain that I went through, I accepted, but I moved forward and see what is really the angle that I should be moving in. What is really the angle that I should have been? Maybe I was doing the wrong thing and maybe it's teach, taught me how to move in a better way. So, um, yes, the pain of... I think we also endure in this time, we endure our African-American brothers and sisters, the pains they go through. I'm also developing a community up in North City in Baden. And uh, uniquely, I spend time with them. We have an after school program. Our goal is to do housing. Our goal is to create jobs. There's a big goal. Anyway, yeah, our first phase in regards of creating an after school mentorship program. And in that program, some of the kids that I never thought. One day I was just sitting there frustrated uh, because I'm trying my best to show you how much I care. And one of the young ladies I would have never guessed said, you guys, listen, listen. Mr. Cyril was like us, right? They didn't put the difference because I grew up dirt poor. She said, Mr. Cyril was like us and he's made it. And now he's coming back to help us so we can be like him. Man, what a, what a words to hear. And I was like, Yes, I haven't made it, but, but you didn't, I, I didn't expect that from that girl one bit. Of all people, I didn't expect it from her. Uh, but it was so encouraging because they saw me as one. And I did endure their pain because their pain is very similar. Sometimes we don't realize because they suffer and I suffer. Uh, definition of suffering is up to the individual's eyes. But suffering is suffering. And how do we heal? We have to be united once again. And I always say, I've seen Mr. Jeffrey doing some amazing work. Uh, I know others, Brian, I know we've donated some stuff and water and things like that to the protesters, but how can we align and really be one? Because at the end of the day, we're still fighting the same battles. We're the ones in the impoverished communities. We're the ones that's kind of left behind. So we need to really come alongside each other and see how we can make a better America for each of us. Because those are my brothers and sisters, right? At the end of the day, um, I might have been to a private uh, Caucasian school, mostly predominantly. I might have grew up in a Caucasian neighborhood, but at the end of the day, I am black. And uh, that's what I'm, I'm proud of to be. Great. That, that is, did, uh, did uh, Rinola, did you get your answer? Yes, I did. Yes, I Good. did. Thank you very much, Mr. Sir. That's awesome. Anybody with another question? We're up in enough for another five minutes. Uh, we can get somebody to ask a question. But uh, 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 yeah, uh, I would like to ask Lucy a question. Mm -hmm. um, now that you've made it, Lucy, <laughs> uh, what are your next aspirations in life? What, what do you see yourself getting into and what differences, if you do want to make differences in your community, in your society, you would like to make? Um, I don't know. Uh, I think I'm still like growing or learning about myself. So I don't know if I can say that I've officially made it, but I am. Um, because uh, there's always still opportunity to learn and grow and so I'm still learning um, and I do eventually want to pursue a PhD um, but currently I'm looking for um, work or doing anything uh, with refugee women particularly pregnant women um, and just sort of helping um, them get access to services that usually they don't have or they don't know that they have those opportunities or 
um, chances of getting the services that they need. Um, and so um, any anything in that area or in that uh, field um, and just continuing to do more research um, and work um, globally. Uh, eventually, I do hope to maybe go back to Kenya and also work uh, there for some time um, and just see where life takes me. Because uh, right now with COVID-19, everything is sort of uncertain and it's hard to see my direction or like where I'm headed. And so I'm just still trying to stay motivated and um, keeping in mind like what my aspirations are and what I can do to give back to either St. Louis or the people that have helped me get to where I am and uh, helping other people as well you know like people who uh, want to get to where I am or just um, help support me get further so right that's good I like that uh, I, I and, and I think uh, uh, both of you have said something that I want to echo uh, a little bit about supporting and uh, uh, being there for somebody else. Um, uh, you, you've talked about networking, uh, which is uh, one thing that I've really well wish that we are able to do more uh, as Africans. Uh, we, we don't do a lot of that. We also do do a lot of networking within ourselves. Uh, that is something that I would really uh, ask that we can be able to request everybody in the forum to try that and 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 i think like uh Shiro said that uh, uh when we also make it uh let us also try to stretch our hand back and uh, uh support those who are coming after us um i, I think that's why we, we we started a program called mentorship program uh where we have immigrants professionals who have made it in life here in st louis they come back and mentor our high school and college students uh so that they don't make the same mistake they made uh at least uh but also give them that that like Cyril said you have to know somebody uh in order for you to be able to succeed uh, there are some places you can apply like uh, mohammed was saying you can apply some places but if you just look at the last and last name uh, and uh, it sounds very African, they can actually easily judge you because of their last name. And, and, and that, that, is, that is why you will not be even given a chance to be invited for an interview. So a lot of us are missing a lot of those opportunity just because of the mention of our last name. And, 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 and the way to overcome that is actually to have somebody who would be able to say, I know so-and-so who is applying for a job, would you think you can be able to have a place for him? Uh, but at the same time, uh, like Ciro said, inviting them for some of these meetings. If you're working somewhere, you are a professional somewhere, and uh, there is a networking meeting, uh, be generous and invite some of our high school, college students who are graduating right now. We have a WhatsApp group for those who are in high school, I mean, who are graduating right now. And we've been trying to connect them with uh, uh, people who they can know, because also we want them to know them before they start uh, referring for a job. Uh, at least they are sure of the person they're referring to is somebody of who will not be able to uh, fail them. So building those network is something that I would really uh, emphasize. And, and, and if you have a way that you can come in and be able to be part of that, uh, we have a big, big need for us, for more people to have mentors in the program. But also if you are college students or high school students and you want to benefit that, uh, you can also be able to share your input in it. Uh, one thing I'll add on what Ciro said is that uh, we've always also tried to make our presence be felt in St. Louis. I think he, Ciro mentioned when the protest was going on, uh, we had uh, Arinola, Brian, and a bunch of other people, we team up together, we raised the money, we bought 15 cases of water, and we went downtown to protest. I think when we were there, actually, the mayor of Florida, or St. Louis came to us because it's a very unique group. And uh, we had a great chat with, them, with, the, with her, uh, telling them, uh, yeah, we have a group of African community who are in this city, and we want to be involved in what's happening. Um, and after that, I, we, we have a group of high school students that are doing public policy uh, class right now. It's, it's going to be a four weeks program. And uh, uh, we have lucky because we have been able to invite a couple of uh, elected officials to be able to speak to them. 
Uh, one is because one is actually uh, the county executive, Dr. Sam Page, will be talking to them on uh, June 29 at 1 p.m. And I would extend that invit invitation to anybody in this forum because they were talking to the youth, but I also want them to also to hear some, to, to interact with some of the adults. So if you can put on your calendar on uh, July 29, 27, 29, we will have a, a conversation with Dr. Sam Page, he's the county executive of St. Louis. Uh, on June, on, 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 uh, June 30th, uh, we'll have uh, the Missouri Senator uh, Brian Williams also will be part of uh, our conversation on uh, that going to be at 12 p.m. Uh, on June 30th. Uh, and then we are waiting for a confirmation, confirmation from the uh, county prosecutor, Wesley Bell, uh, to be able to join us in one of the forums. And also the uh, next week, we might be able to get the chief of police actually from Florida and to, to join the group. Uh, any of those, if you feel like you really want to be part of that, let me know. I would be able to send you the invitation. But also in your own length, in your own capacity, if there is something that you feel that we can be able to do, however small it is, and you feel like we can be able to participate, I, I, I don't like approach where we approach where we are asking for help because there is something we can do. And when we, because you're part of this city, we are part of this region, the reason why we have not been, uh, we, we maybe mostly, uh, but ignoring a lot is because we also don't come out a lot. So those who are, if you have a way, you have a, uh, an idea or something, let's rally together. If I can look at the forum here, we have people from all different countries and, and we, 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 we represent everyone. So um, let's see how we can be able to do that and, uh, and at least be, our presence be, be felt in this, uh, in this region. And uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, when it comes to jobs, if you know there is a place that you have a job that it can be, I just had a call, actually I was late because I was con having a conversation with a lady who was looking for a job and she got stuck uh, uh, for because of COVID-19 and she has a family. So we had a long conversation on how we can be able to get her back on track. Uh, if you have somewhere we can be able to connect some of these people, that will be fine. Um, I had another gentleman call from actually uh, 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 Chicago, no, uh, from Georgia. He was in a remote area in Georgia. He was kicked out by his uh, host and he was looking for somewhere he can get help. Um, uh, for some reason, he Googled, he Googled on, go on online and Googled and he found uh, um, he found us, so he called me and he said, I'm really kicked out in the next two days. I need to be out. I don't know where to go. I don't know anybody around. Uh, I need some help. Uh, fortunately, we were able to get him here and uh, uh, we got him a host and now he has two jobs working. So we're trying to get him a vehicle right now so he can be able to be mobile. Um, it, and there's so many stories that we we, 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 we come across every day. Not that we have enough uh, resources, but because we have people who have great heart, uh, people who are willing to help. I think when I posted on online and I say, I need somebody who can help host a guy, I had six people actually called and say, yeah, I'm, uh, we, we can host him. So we, we had more than people willing to get out of their way to help. And that's what we want. We want that spirit of what they call Ubuntu, Ubuntu spirit. Uh, what you can do as one person, uh, it makes a big difference. You can't change the world, but you can change the world of one person by the little things that you do to them. And, and I think there is a quote that they always say that I cannot do everything, but one thing that I can do, I will not fail to do what I can do. I uh, can't remember the exact wording, but it's the, the, the things that, you, that is within your control, that, that's what you can do. What you cannot do, then you leave it to God. But what is within your control, just do it. And, and I think that's what we're all doing here. If you see Zero doing what he's doing, if you see uh, uh, Lucy, whether she's sharing all that, uh, and, uh, and everybody at this forum, I would say it, it, it's a lot so we can be able to do that. I, I, I want to big, big, give a big shout to Rebecca Miller. I know she's on uh, mute. 
I think she's in there, but she has been one of our biggest supporters from Lutheran Foundations and, and great ideas and great uh, support they give us even with the resources, uh, even for this time when we are suffering challenges because of COVID-19. Most of the things that we, are, we see us doing it is not that we have, uh, and it, we could not be able to do that without the support of uh, uh, great support we get from uh, Lutheran foundations and other people and people like other individuals who've been great supporters for us. So thank you so much. And uh, uh, I think if uh, there is nobody with that, did we have a question here that we can respond from the chat? Um, uh, I have a question, Mr. Jeff. Yes. I wanted to ask uh, Cyril and Lucy because as immigrants, I know that you guys have Thank God you've done really well. But I know that it must not have been easy for you. So how have you been able to work on your weaknesses without beating yourself up and then turning those weaknesses into strength to help you in your career? They're really tough. <laughs> you on mute. Thank you. I thought I pressed it. I'm sorry. I'll go. Um, my weakness is doing the days in and days out. I, I cannot stand being in and doing the little details, right? I have the grand ideas. I'm an entrepreneur. I think that way. Uh, the little nits and grits of getting there uh, bugs me. Uh, but in saying that, uh, it has to get done. Uh, so throughout COVID, I was a, a long time ago, I was offered, I took some courses, right? I, I was offered to take some courses through Enterprise University and other places. I took some courses to work on my weaknesses. So I'm always trying to develop my weakness. I knew as a business, as a business uh, thing I echo to the students so much is get your finance and accounts. So I was able to take a whole bunch of accounting classes and work on those details because I want to be the best. I want to be well-rounded in everything I do. So uh, one of my weakness, I'm very, I take criticism very well because I know I'm, I'm not there yet. And um, so once I figure out I have a weakness in it, I try to read on it. I try to develop, I search for classes on it. And I try to plug myself to learn from somebody, somebody that's doing it really well. And uh, in saying that, it helps me kind of balance out a little bit. So yeah, I hopefully that answers your, your question. Yes, yes. Lucy? Oh no, uh, <laughs> that is uh, a bit of like what you said, uh, but for me, uh, knowing my weakness, uh, just kind of like knowing that it's okay to fail and uh, there's always going to be um, like an opportunity to do better. So we learn from our experiences. And uh, so taking the best out of that and not beating myself up about it because I know no one is perfect and someone to be great, you have to like experience failure and loss and all that kind of thing. So just growing up, growing from that and taking, not taking it to heart, but um, just knowing that there's a chance for you to improve and hopefully that you learn from your mistake and not do it again. Uh, but just encouraging myself, I guess, not being hard on myself um, because I can never, no one can ever be perfect, at least I don't think. And uh, so just, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think that is, uh, if I can say we are right on time. Uh, okay, we are right on time. Um, so uh, I wanted to say that um, thank you so much. I think we will do another one. Uh, I guess somebody joining, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do another meeting, uh, I think, in uh, uh, end of uh, early August. Early August. Uh, so we're going to get uh, communicate once we get the speakers. I think I have some people who have shown some interest and in be able to speak. Um, uh, and uh, um, if you have uh, somebody who is in need in the community, uh, I have uh, Idalia. Are you there? Idalia was with uh, Caso. Uh, I think uh, she just left. All right. But we have a great partnership with them. So for those who are in need of uh, bills and the staff uh, uh, and, and need some help, we, we have some great uh, support. Uh, we are able to help those who are in need. 
we don't want people to uh, stay hungry. We don't want people to stay in the too hot area without the utility bills and all those kind of stuff. And, and I, like I said, uh, we you are the people you are the people that you know that are that are that you, we we don't know. So share with them, and then we can be able to connect with the with the different resources. Um, and then uh, the other thing is. Uh, uh, we have some mask that we uh, donate, we've graduated donated by St. Louis County. Uh, uh, I think we got almost 3,000 uh, of them. So we've been distributed to community leaders and churches. Uh, still have some left. Uh, if you know you have somebody, if you need or you know somebody who needs it, uh, let me know. We can, we can pick them up in the office or we can meet somewhere and we can drop. I know I have a pack for Mohammed and his team that I need to drop uh, probably tomorrow. And, and uh, I think I see um, Gandhi also. I think he had also requested. I, I thought I had seen him, but uh, if not, we'll be able to connect. But anything else that is there that you feel like people need, uh, uh, let us know. If we don't have it, we can always try to connect them with the uh, uh, with, the right, with the right resources. Other than that, um, and uh, Alan, you wanted to say something before we end? Yes, just to remind about um, the organization, Vitendo for Africa is a non-profit organization established in 2010, located in North County. Vitendo strives to empower stronger, healthier immigrants, individual and family. As a well-known organization, we hope to build momentum for a better future by providing the attendees an opportunity to meet new people and hear community and youth immigrant leaders sharing their success, failure, and lesson. And tonight, just to recap, we heard about two great speakers, and the theme was uh, how culture differences influence communication. And we learned from uh, Lucy Ingaiza and Cyril Lom. That was really, really great. And we just want to seize this opportunity to thank Lucy, to thank Cyril, and big thanks to Geoffrey for the opportunity to connect. And those who are interested in sharing their story with us and the experience for the next speaker series, you can contact us at infovitendoforafrica.org or by phone at 314-252. 0488 and thank you all. Geoffrey, are you back? Great, thank you, thank you. Alan, uh, I forgot to mention Alan is also one of our board member and a very, very uh, committed member. So we, we thank you, uh, Alan, for even committing your time to be with us tonight. Uh, like Alan said, uh, you can also visit our website. Uh, we, if you want to support, uh, there is always a donation button there. You can always donate. Uh, and uh, also, if you want to be part of any of the team, I know Arinola has been very grateful for uh, uh, support, for supportive even when we're doing our kids program, uh, the tutoring program, and now the technology program. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, if you feel like you can be able to be any of any of those help, uh, feel free to reach out to us, and then we can hook you up on some areas that you can be able to touch. I see Brian. Uh, thank you, Brian, for coming. A uh, better day than never, than never. But uh, we appreciate and Cindy from uh, the president of uh, Sierra Leone community. We appreciate that. Uh, Brian is also the president of uh, Missouri Young Professionals, African professional in Missouri. So we we work all together with this great team, and that's how uh, the community has been coming together and big big. I mean, we are all become a very big community in St. Louis and, and a great way to be reckoned with. I know you are joking around my hair, but I, I'm going to put out my real dreads, but I, I think the front part is disappointing me. <laughs> so thank you. I say also, uh, uh, Dr. Maloney, I'm so grateful that you're here and uh, uh, there is a meeting that is coming up on Saturday uh, on mental health. So if everybody is available, Dr. Mudoni has been leading that part uh, on uh, creating awareness of mental health in the, in, the, in the African community after we have had a lot of cases of suicide cases in our community and depression. Uh, she stepped in and uh, thank you, 
so much, uh, Dr. Muloni, for your great support and giving your time to be part of this and, and, and impact the community in that area. So on Saturday, we'll have a Zoom meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, and uh, we have a great speaker, Dr. Muloni, who's gonna be speaking on that time. So help, help her to spread the word. Uh, and if you all can join in, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, that would be awesome. Sierra Leone will get us uh, a CD, get us a lot of people from your community. Uh, Moyap, get us from students, from international students, and, and, and uh, we, we can be able to help each other. Uh, Siri, CD, uh, Lucy and Sirio, thank you so much. We give you a good applaud for your great thank presentation. You. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, Rebe uh, Lucy is uh, just graduated. So if you have any connections where she can get a job and Mohammed, I think that would be a big bonus for this meeting today. <laughs> All right, God bless you and you have a good day. Uh, have a good night. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Alan. Yes. How are you? Oh, I'm sorry. This technology, I don't know what happened really. 